Bear Essentials podcast gives older bears a place to gather for real talk regarding topics and issues that they can relate to. Here at The Bear Essentials, we aren't just having conversations. We are looking to provide actionable intelligence through real-life experience and expertise of our guests. Our mission is to build a strong community that elevates and motivates people to go beyond their limiting beliefs by helping them realize that getting older is not an excuse to hibernate on their goals, but a reason to work harder. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I am your host, Charles Wallace. Today's guest has been a staple in the music scene of Philadelphia and its surrounding areas for many, many years. He has been the lead singer for bands such as Blackthorn, Patty's Well, and now currently the Paul Moore Band. His voice will make you feel like you're sitting at a pub in Ireland. So without further ado, let's jump right on into my interview with Paul Moore. But first, a word from our sponsor. Wolfinger Consulting. Experts who have achieved real results for their clients, including complying efficiently and successfully with overwhelming discovery orders, passing difficult third-party security audits, and deploying bleeding-edge technology platforms to control and preserve corporate information. Let them show you what Wolfinger Consulting can do for you. Be sure to check out their webpage at wolfingerforensics.com. Hey, Paul, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? Good morning. I'm good. How's it going, Charles? It's going well. I really want to say thanks for doing this. I, I've been a fan for a long time. I've got had the pleasure of seeing you and your bands over the years at multiple gigs, and it's it's always been great fun for me to come and watch you guys, and I <laughs> really couldn't wait to get you on the podcast. You've been somebody I've been wanting to have on, so thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me. I feel you know really honored to be asked. So thanks for uh, letting me join you today. So, Paul, for a lot of folks around the Philadelphia area, they'll see this. I, there are a lot of these people that watch my show. I know they're familiar with with you and your bands over the years. But I want to ask you, you know, there's a lot of people that tune in, at, you know, not from the area. Uh, could you give a little bit of an intro of yourself for for those people? Sure. Um, born in Philadelphia and uh, raised in Frankfurt area, of Philadelphia, around Bridge and Pratt, lower Northeast, and uh, had a great childhood growing up in, in the area. Went to school at St. Bartholomew and uh, then went on to North Catholic High School and followed that up by going to Temple University, where I first had the opportunity to go to Ireland myself through the university there and study in Trinity College for a semester. So that's where the Irish music really took off for me. Um, even though the family had the roots in that and the songs and some of the stories about Irish history and things like that, I really got, you know, um, you know, the full, full gamut of everything, the history, this, you know, the dance, the music, the, the folklore, it was really, um, uh, pretty exciting and, uh, wonderful time to spend those six months there. And I've been back dozens of times since. So it stayed with me through, through, through that time so so here here in that paul and in, in just you know over the years coming to your gigs listening to your you know god i'm getting old paul i'm listening to your cds i mean hell uh, we're talking about cds now we can stream the music but you know just listening i've always been a really big fan of your of your voice and you know as far as musicianship, vocals, instruments, like what's your background in that? Are you are you trained in any way or is it just something you picked up uh, as you were growing up? Well, the vocals was uh, definitely just um, through my family sing alongs and singing. And we, my mother was a very good singer. and My grandparents were good singers. They loved to sing. And uh, that's where I picked up that, you know, gene or that bug. You know, I really enjoyed uh, listening to people sing. At holidays around the, the house and um, no one was really a musician that i remember uh, but my mother when i was young decided that i was going to learn how to play the, the music and we didn't have a piano really couldn't afford a piano but we could rent an accordion which was only like four bucks a month or something like that and i remember learning my first four four years i guess on the accordion but it wasn't cool walking around with an accordion i didn't think it was anyway i wanted a guitar so when I got to be old enough, I got myself a guitar, acoustic guitar. 
and uh, but the training in the um, on the piano accordion was very helpful in helping me learn how to play guitar. So I thank my mom for that. And uh, so then I would be around the family table and playing songs on. At first it was accordion, but then much cooler to have the guitar out. So I played the guitar and we'd sing along with songs, uh, Irish songs and American songs growing up. And uh, it was always, you know, a good time at the party. We'd have a, a sing song, so to speak, or a session. Grandparents, uncles, aunts, they all had a, a song, party piece, their favorite song or their best song. They'd always sing that one. You know they were going to sing it, you know. And uh, I picked up on all that when I was young. And uh, I took it with me when I went to the school in Ireland and when I lived in Ireland. And I really became immersed in it when I went to school at Trinity College in Dublin. Yeah, Paul, I love that. I love to ask that. I'm always curious. I've had some other musicians on the show and it's always it, it's always a mix. You know, uh, I honestly, I think I'll say, though, that the majority of the musicians I've had on this show, it's kind of similar. It's you know, I'm not not classically trained, per se, you know, just picked it up a lot to do with the with the families. Um, so, Paul, outside of the Irish music, as far as the American music, when I listen to you, I've always gotten that kind of singer songwriter vibe to me, which I'm a huge fan of. I think James Taylor, people like that. What are your influences as far as American music? James Taylor's a good one. Um, he wasn't my first, uh, I think the first American bands that I really enjoyed were the ones that my parents, you know, turned me on to the Kingston trio, believe it or not, my dad loved them. And uh, Simon and Garfunkel is another, uh, duo they were really uh always on in the house and, and but i became uh when we got a set of headphones and, and we this is before cds we had phonographic you know records you know uh 35s and, and uh, what were they, uh, 45 yeah 45s i think they were called I, but i put them on and I, I remember putting a headphone on first time like and it was the beatles Abbey Road, and it was in stereo, and it just blew my mind. You know, that was um, the thing that really got me going. I really enjoyed the Beatles and their diversity of music. They played ballads, they played rock, they played country, they played, you know, love songs. And then they, they, the diversity of the, of the music they're putting out there really got me as a young kid. Mm. Um, not American, British, <laughs> but a great rock band. Dude. So it's, uh, uh, you know, now, now you, you know, I, I love not really doing these scripted because I like to see where the conversation is going to go. So now that you mentioned the Beatles growing up, my mom, oh, I was huge Beatles fans, the records. So put you on the spot. What song of the Beatles would you say was the kind of that song that really impacted you as really young, a young kid? Wow. I, which one didn't? I it's really hard. Yeah, there's so many. I can't think of that that first song I heard on the. Uh, I think the first song that I heard was "Hello Goodbye." It wasn't. It wasn't. So it wasn't Abbey Road. It was Sergeant Pepper, I believe, or something around that time. Magical Mystery Tour. One of those albums that that had still the same. You know, sound, and I remember how you say yes, I say no, and the harmonies. That was one of the first ones I remember sticking out in my head in the late '60s. I guess it was early '70s. Yeah, the, you know, that was one of the ones. But I love the, you know, um, the ballads like in my life and uh, yesterday and songs like that. They were easier to play on guitar, and I really learned those ones when I was young. So, Paul, the other thing I like to ask because obviously for you, it's a lot to do with you know a lot of Irish music, right? And you know, how much does that history, the Irish history, you said when you went over there, you really got immersed in it? How how much like living over there and breathing that, experiencing that history directly over there, how much did that end up really influencing you as not just a musician, as even like a songwriter and, and the songs that you like to like to put out? Uh, good question. I, I loved history as a kid, too. As much as music, I loved history. Um, got it from my dad. He really was a history guy. American history, you know, Civil War, you know all about. He was in... Uh, the army so he knew a lot about the uh, second world war and things like that so i actually became a, ma a history major at temple university so i was already um uh a big fan and, and loved all history but i didn't know a whole lot about irish history so to speak you know um 
my grandfather talked about certain things, but not real specific things. He wasn't well, well educated or anything. He told stories and, and such. But when I went to Ireland, I really, I, I learned a lot about the history of Ireland, and I learned a lot of the reasons why we are where we are now in Philadelphia, why we came here. Uh, it wasn't because it was a good package deal on a, you know, on a cruise ship. It was, you know, we basically lost land and couldn't feed our families. That's what my grandfather always said. Ireland couldn't feed my family. So they left. Um, but I, I, I learned why and how through the schooling and the education at Trinity College. Uh, the Irish had a tough, a very tough existence uh, in the 18 hundreds after the during the famine after the famine and all through the uh, the early 1900s so we're here we meaning irish americans are in this country for a lot of reasons and I, I i learned why exactly why um through my studies at trinity and paul would you say that um you know that history you know did it become kind of a conscious decision as you started to evolve as a musician did that history kind of just impact you just it kind of just washed over you or was it more of, you know, was it calculated Were you kind of like, you know what, I want to put music out that kind of tells that history because people need to hear that history. Well, it's a great question. Um, I guess for myself, I, the songs that my family were singing were more love songs about Ireland or, you know, longing for Ireland. Um, uh, Patsy Fagan and, and uh, the Golden Jubilee, just nice songs of, about Ireland, the Black Velvet Band, uh, songs like that. But when I went to Ireland, there was a lot of political songs, which and a lot of them had a lot of the history in them. Uh, the Wolf Tones and the Christy Moore, Dubliners, they, they, they didn't just sing the love songs and the drinking songs. They sang a lot of songs that had a lot of history to them. So, and that was, wow, I was really impressed by that. And I said, we really don't have that in a Philadelphia. I'm not, I'd never heard it. Um, uh, I was young, though, so I, I wasn't out in the bars, really. But um, I thought, when I go back, I want to try and do this. I'm going to try and give some of this history in, in the form of song uh, to people I know in Philadelphia, that they're Irish-American or not irish american You could be any background and maybe have a similar story of struggle and emigration and famine and whatever else they went through. So it appealed to mainly Irish I was looking for um, because that's what my background is and my, a lot of my friends and things, but to anyone. And I've had a lot of people who are not really Irish that feel the same way. They had an immigrant experience or they had, you know, some reasons why their family couldn't live in Italy or Poland or wherever they're from, you know, so they can still appreciate it even if they don't, um, you know, exactly understand, you know, the Irish experience. Um, that being said, I definitely did have a plan. I wanted to come back and and try to play music that I was hearing both as a kid, but also mix in the songs, the history. And uh, I, I think I reached a, a few people and I, I'm glad that they enjoyed it because I enjoyed doing it. Yeah, you definitely did reach people. And, you know, myself, I'm an absolutely history. I love history. And I... I started to go down that path of questioning because, you know, as much as you're obviously the musicianship, the vocals, all that, um, I wanted to pull out a song, talk about this song in particular, because I think it really shows what you just talked about. And it's my favorite song that you do, as you did with Blackthorn, uh, Sons of Molly. And that song to me, and I had a chance to go up there in Jim Thorpe to see the actual prison with the handprint on the wall. And I mean, Paul, I think you guys just that song, the verses and the way it puts the history of that together in a song like that is pretty, pretty amazing to me. Um, I wanted to, you know, just get your take on that, on that song and talk about that a little bit. Okay. Um, it's ironic. Um, over Easter, my son, Owen did the same thing. He asked me the same exact question you just asked me and about that song. And uh, so I can handle that because I'm ready for it. He, I don't know. If, did you talk to my son? I don't, I, it's very ironic. Literally on Sunday, he, he was doing the same thing. 
were, and he recorded me too, like because he was so interested in, this, in the history of it. Um, first thing I want to say is is it's written by uh, Chuck Rogers and, and Bob Rogers. They're two brothers in a band. They were called the Irish Balladeers, and and God bless them both. I think they're both passed on now. They're from Scranton, PA. So they their great great grandparents or grandparents they were coal miners. So it came from them, and. Uh, you know, the Molly Maguires is an American Irish experience, but the Molly Maguires themselves are originally from Ireland. Those kind of groups that would come up and fight back against, you know, oppression, uh, whether it be in the mines or in the fields. Originally, the Molly Maguires were agricultural, you know, farmers that were fighting against landlords that were raising their rents or kicking them off their lands and things like that. That's how they organized originally. But when they came to this country, it's ironic because most Irishmen, most of them were farmers. And they came to this country, they felt the land failed them for the most part in Ireland, whether it be famine or British rule or the landlords or whatever it was. When they came to America, they went to the cities and they tr tried to work that way. They they felt kind of put off by the the, uh, the farmlands. So they went to the coal mines. And uh, that's where the brothers got the idea about the, the Molly Maguire story, which is based on history. It's, you know. American Pennsylvania history and uh, so uh, they were the first guys to really start to try and unionize you know if you, if you lost your fingers back in the mine or you lost your hand or, or you know or were killed you were not compensated at all and then you know they, they tried to correct that and uh, and get that situation straightened down and they did so by you know very physical intimidating means sometimes they did kill landlords or a land excuse, excuse me mine bosses or uh you know the bosses in the mine so um but some of them were also falsely accused like alex campbell who left his handprint in the, in the uh, prison wall he did he never did shoot a gun or kill anyone personally so um his death is one of those examples so anyway that's a, i wanted to convey that um through through music and i thank the, the br brothers Rogers from the Irish Balladeers to let me sing that song. So it was a uh, tribute. It, I mean, Paul, it's, it's, you know, and for anyone listening, if you haven't heard it, please, it's Paul's, you know, one of Paul's bands or before Blackthorn and the song is Sons of Molly. I, I highly recommend listening to it. And if you're really interested Irish and you don't from this area and you don't know about it, really look up the Molly McGuire's and, you know, it's pretty amazing what Paul just mentioned about Alex Campbell and the handprint. I mean, that that handprint is still on the wall and they they can't make it. They can't make it leave. So it, it's very, very interesting stuff. Um, So, Paul, I wanted to get into a little bit about you come back from Ireland and you say you have a plan. Uh, I was always curious about this. Did you do you think you made it beyond what you may have expected because to me i think you guys made it to be you know relatively relatively big was that the plan or do you think you went past the expectations you may have had um without a doubt it was an experiment but i was um you know fully committed to giving it a try i i would have done it all these years for nothing you know for fun because i enjoyed it i like the music i love singing i love entertaining and i i like making people learn something or enjoy and, and, and have the same feeling um but you're i'd be lying if i said i thought we'd be that successful i i didn't think it would be what it became which was very very popular you know music in the all through the late 80s 90s and 2000s it, it you know and still today um and i was i think we when I came back from Ireland, there was also still a lot of stuff going on um, politically in Ireland. Ireland was in the news a lot. Peace process was going on. There was still a lot of troubles over Northern Ireland. And they worked that all out. That was all going on when I was starting up Blackthorn. And uh, up. and then also there was things like Riverdance was coming up. That was all over the place. So a lot of things Irish were popular. And I think I was lucky to catch that wave too. Um, the timing was just a bit of luck but but i was totally into it 100 percent into it and uh never did it full time we all 
all of us, you know, always had day jobs. My father always told me, don't give up your day job. You're not that good. You know, you're good, but not that good. And so we did. We, we all kept our day jobs, but we worked every weekend, almost Thursday to Sunday for like 10 years. And uh, don't regret a bit of it. And yes, to answer your question, it was a lot bigger than I ever anticipated. So the next question is a lot of gigs over the years. And I've been at some of those gigs where I, I mean, literally could barely move in the place. It was, you know, um, what, what was it like that kind of, as you're playing these gigs, right? What was that? Was there ever that one kind of gig, that one moment that you looked out into the crowd and you were like, wow, like I kind of, I'm living this dream, but I never really thought it would get to this point. Uh, there's not a specific one like that comes to my mind right there. Um, I do remember um, the Irish weekend at Moore's Inlet, which were many years we did that those. And but I remember after nine eleven uh, happened. It was literally two weeks after that event, you know, and the show must go on. And we went out there and uh, we. Uh, we put on a heck of a show. I just remember the people needed that. And uh, we sang a few American patriotic songs as well, which was very, very cool. And it tied it all together with our Irish heritage, and, you know, love of freedom and wanting freedom for all of Ireland. And we got smacked in the face on 9-11. And uh, people came together that Irish weekend. That really sticks in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you definitely I, I know in some of your music, I definitely hear you have some songs. I think uh, the one I really like, I think you sound fantastic on is um, with New York and the Irish. I think that's one of your vocals. I think you sound really, really fantastic. Um, so, Paul, the other thing I want to ask you about as you start to talk through that is and I I think this is kind of cool. When we hear bands a lot of times from over and say, Ireland, Britain, right? UK, you kind of hear their accent goes away. What I always thought was great with you, and it really, really brought me to it more. I love that when you sing, I can hear, and I guess it's from your time over there in Ireland, I can hear a little bit of the Irish kind of accent come out. Is that from the the family sing-alongs in your time over in Ireland? A bit of both, I think, because this, the songs they sang had they sang with a bit of a brogue to them, you know. The, the albums my parents would play uh, had Irish singers, so I would, you know, emulate them. And living in Ireland, definitely uh, sitting around. We I played in Ireland several times with musicians learning different songs and and the way the phrases were. I try to adapt them the same, you know, the same way the phrases. And um, so, yeah, I do sing with a bit of an accent. Like people ask me, you know. Paul, you didn't have that accent back in North Catholic. Where'd you get that that that, that accent? And I told him, "Oh, there's not a little Irish gift shop down on Kensington Avenue." I bought it, you know, <laughs> popped a few pills in it, you know, joking around like that. But but no, it's from my my family and also my time um, living there and learning the music that way. So, uh, but speaking of um, this song, New York was Irish. Just want to mention, ironically, again, I was just talking to the fellow who wrote that song. Terry Wench, and he lives in Washington, D.C., and uh, the song is called When New York Was Irish, and I just ordered a CD from him because he has a new CD out, So, and that song's on there, which is incredibly, really good song, and I agree with you. It's one of the, you know, it just tells the struggles of, you know, people coming to this country and uh, succeeding like we have. So uh, I just want to throw Terry Wench a little shout-out out there. Well, thanks for that. And I'll definitely have to check him out also. Um, and, you know, I wanted to, Paul, I don't think you knew this person, but you kind of brought up with New York and the Irish. Um, I kind of wanted to take a second here during this podcast since it was kind of Irish music. And I actually had a friend who I met years ago. Uh, his name's Tim Murphy. He was from Peekskill, New York. And definitely he had a band called Session, ironically. And, you know, um back when the irish tenors were starting to become big uh my sister sings 
And, you know, I somehow got in touch with this one Irish tenor, John McDermott. He said, come on up to Peekskill. So we did. And he literally just put us in a room with Tim Murphy and Tim started playing the guitar and background to the rose and my sister sung. And we became friends ever since. And I bring it up because I asked him a few weeks ago as I was getting guests for the podcast about him coming on. And he said, you know, almost like you, Paul, like I'm a no, I'm I'm not big enough to do a podcast. Right. Whatever. I said, well, you're you're big to me. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm feeling a little under the weather, nothing major. I'm feeling sick, but we're going to do that. And, you know, a little bit of a regret. I found out this week that Tim passed away, but I kind of wanted to just I thought this was the perfect time. And it came up here to just shout out to Tim Murphy and all he's done and and peak skill and his family. So I, I really just want to give a shout out. And I thought this was the perfect, perfect time, perfect environment to do it. So, so Tim, cheers. I know you're looking down. You'll probably, he listened to all these podcasts and always used to say, great job. You're doing a great job. So, and I know he would have been listening to this one because I passed him a couple of your uh, CDs before and he actually was, was a fan. So Tim, shout out to Tim Murphy. Yeah. Cheers to that. Tim Murphy didn't know. I know a lot of Tim Murphy's, but I don't think I knew Tim from Peekskill, Pe New York. Yeah, Tim. And, was um, but now McDermott, I I know him from the tenors, wasn't he? Yeah, he's one of the tenors, right? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I'm hoping to eventually have him on too because his like kind of like you, you know, he just sent it, you know, nothing, you know, put a CD out for his parents and it like became huge. So, um, so anyway, so so back to you now. I wanted to ask, you know, when you mentioned about touring and not, not touring, but doing all these gigs for all that time. And honestly, it seems like, and I could tell by the effort you guys will put into those shows. I used to wonder how you could do it. Um, so is that what kind of led to eventually, you know, after all those years, you know, cause I think it might've came to a surprise to some people cause Blackthorn was really successful when you kind of took a step back. Um, how, how did that come about? Uh, well, I guess a bit of it was burnout and uh, we were all getting a little tired. We did, we did slow down a little bit. We we took one weekend a month off. So we would stay married. <laughs> we're all still married to the same woman, I believe, you know, the black Thor guys. So we're lucky that way. Um, some guys want, you know, the younger fellas, I think younger than me a little bit wanted to push more and more. And I think I just backed off a little bit from that. Also a little bit was um, musical diversions um i i like keeping it more irish i think traditional and um th there was a few guys that wanted to go you know in a more rock direction and we, we definitely played rock mm -hmm. music too but um more heavily that way so i just said no now it's time for me to go i'm, I'm good with that so that uh -huh. So, so that happens. And then now, you know, I know you're still, you're still playing and it's the, the Paul Moore band, right? So when do you become like, okay, you know what? I still want to, I still want to keep being out there. I still want to keep playing music. You know, did you kind of have an idea that you wanted to continue or was that after taking a little bit of a break? Well, I took a year or more off right after I left Blackthorn. Um, and so I relaxed and then, you know, I decided, and my, my big event happened. My brother had passed away in a car accident. So I lost my brother, Pat. And so I, it was a good timing. I, I actually quit the band right before his accident. So it was good that I was there for my mom, my family, and my sister. And um, it was meant to be, I guess. It was almost like a, timing was perfect to leave Blackthorn. But then after about a year or so, year and a half, I wanted to get back out and play in the public. So I started a band, and I called it Patty's Well, which... Uh, a little influence of my brother Pat, Patty, and Patty's Well. Uh, my great grandfather's family was from Peter's Well in Ireland, a little place in Galway. So it was kind of a combination. Patty's Well, Patty's doing well, and it's a place in Ireland too. So it was kind of a mixture of that kind of thing. So I did that with a few good friends, uh, Joe Hughes being one of them, and Matt Brescia, who's still playing with us. So I we did that band for about ten years, and then again, people went their separate ways. Uh, uh, bass player got married, little player moved back to Ireland. Um, you know, Joe got married. So we, we broke up Patty's well. So, um, Paul Moore band came about is because I figured if I called Paul, 
I won't get kicked out of the Paul Moore band. <laughs> so I, I figured, you know, name it after me. Joe Conklin told me that. He was Paul, just name it after yourself. You know, can't kick yourself out. My wife says she could kick me out still. That's true. She could still. But that's the joke. <laughs> Joe Conklin was a joke with me about it. just call yourself the Paul Moore band so you don't get kicked out. But um, in, in truth, I guess that's what he said. You're, you know, people do know your name. This is after 25, you know, 25 years of playing in the Philadelphia area. I guess, you know, I didn't realize it, but people did know the name, you know, Paul Moore. I just thought they knew Blackthorn, but no, they knew Paul, Paul Moore. Yeah, that the lead singer, you know. So it didn't make sense. Um, it's a little, not my cup, a little egotistical Paul Moore band, you know, but um, it made sense and uh, it's it's going great. Um, we play a lot of fun gigs, not as much as we used to in Blackthorn days. We play three times a month usually, except March, which is crazy. But other than that, you know, we just three or four times a month and uh, play you know, the local pubs still we do paddy wax and uh, you know we're playing this week at the ash burner in northeast philly we play down the shore you know at the wharf and uh anglesey pub and of course irish weekend at um oh where are we at now irish weekend it's uh used to be called uh wars what is it now help me out <laughs> oh the inlet <laughs> yeah the inlet So, so Paul, I guess what I kind of wanted to end with here was obviously you just kind of said at 25 years, you know, when, when you look back, when, you know, finally you decide that, you know what, when you kick yourself out of the Paul Moore band and it's enough, what do you want people to kind of look back at your impact, your, your legacy on this area, this music and, and the Irish heritage? And what do you hope? people remember and what do you want them to kind of hope they say about you uh just i i think the thank you is the nicest like thanks so much paul for all you've given us to uh, all the music and all the fun and all the good times you know so i think just the thank you is really heartfelt you know i, I really appreciate that well I'll tell you, I'm going to give it to you now. I know. I hope you've got a lot of years left in you of giving us a lot of music. And uh, I'll say, though, I already thank you because it's been it's been a staple for me over the years, especially March. I feel like I listen to you more in March probably than than any other time of the year. But, you know, your your songs are always um, spliced into my playlists, whether it's just driving around or whatnot. It always it always pop up. And I'll say this when they do pop up. The one thing I'll say is that I kind of can always remember seeing it live or hearing it live and where I was and who I was with. So I think you have that kind of impact on people, Paul. And I'm just really, really happy that you gave me some time today. Um, and, you know, Paul mentioned about the Paul Moore band and it sounds egotistical. Trust me, there's nothing egotistical about Paul Moore. Um, I thought I was going to have to maybe arm wrestle him to get him to do the show because he uh, he didn't think he uh, he was big enough to be on a podcast. But Paul, you 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 are a big deal here, especially in this area, and and you've done a lot, and I I can't thank you enough. So so thank you. Hey Charlie, thank you very much for saying that. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I hope to keep going for a couple more years. You know, I still enjoy it. So as long as I still enjoy it and the wife lets me do it i'm going to keep doing it you know and uh keep playing music around the philadelphia area and hope to see you guys soon all right child well, I'm, I'm going to try to get out to a show soon and uh i want to i'm going to come up and uh you know we'll, we'll continue our chat but you know everybody check out paul the paul moore band in the area um you won't regret it and you know if, if this is your first time you're out of the area you know take a listen check out paul look up his old bands black Thorn Patty's well. Uh, it's it's definitely a treat. So thanks everybody for listening. And Paul, thank you again. And we'll all talk soon. Take care. Bye. This has been the Bear Essentials. Thanks for listening. And remember, never hibernate on your goals. 